Okay, how's everybody doing? So this is going to be a bit of an update then on the progress so far. And I'll just give you a quick tip how I made that little filler block in the corner here that I didn't show in the last episode. Just a little belt sander trick on the bench. Okay, so here's a quick little tip for all you carpenter types. So see this softwood block here? I cut this on the table saw freehand, just pushed it through. Got the angle that I traced or took off of the curvature where I want to block it in and fill it in. So I want a little bit of a uh, radius in here. It's very subtle. So just take your belt sander, in this case it's a Porter Cable 4 inch. And I clamped it with one Irwin quick grip to the edge of the bench or the table. Right? So I can lock out the power to turn it on. And what I do is, is I just take this and I just gently rub it back and forth until I get a nice little taper. Just like that. Okay. Okay, so here's the block, the wedge, just like I filled in there. And this line gets cut right here with the razor saw and then this whole piece is not what will separate. This is the only point that's holding it like structurally together and it's held with bolts here but just cut through there and it's, this is glued but there's parts in there. There's no glue all the way down that seam. So one cut there because the metite will go over this anyway like the seam so you won't see this. So when you just pop the face here off when you take down a layout right because this is pinned on. Uh, it'll it'll separate and then this block here that I told you see so I just cut that And then she slides in like that. Okay All done Okay, so here's a little driveway shop tip. <laughs> As you're cutting up your plywood, see this is ripped in half. I go to Windsor Plywood, they rip it in half for me, shove it in the van. I use the first half for my bench on a fold out table and then I frame up on top of that. And then you can see here, I just shove it into the corner of a big square there. And I use one and a half to two inch 18 gauge brads with tight bond glue and then I run a few brackets in the corners. Uh, you use 18 gauge brads and you won't split the plywood. Okay. And then I'll show you the final uh, module going in right here, C number three. Okay. And somebody mentioned in the comments about, you know, I don't have the skills to do that. I got the house and the budget, whatever. It's just one by, it's, it, it's just one by twos, man. That's all it is. You know, or one by fours if you want. It's pretty basic carpentry 101. I don't know what else to say, really. You don't have to do it fancy like the way I do it, but that, I mean, that's all it is, right? See? There's a four foot and a half or four foot eight right there. Just two foot centers. That's it. And some corner braces and just frame it up square. And, you know, see these uh, strong backs that are made, right? They're these, right? That was the industry standard. Like out of one by fours, we use staples and softwood, but this is plywood, so I use brads because the staples will split this birch with glue. These things are so solid. And I use them for all my supports as I build and stand up my bench work. And then I cut all these up eventually to be my track risers, right? A couple of screws adjust for, for adjusting all your track elevations, right? You know what I mean? Pretty basic, really. I mean, now you can get as fancy as you want because it's just a frame, right? Like, if you want to do fancy curves like this, you can. But if you don't want to, that's fine. I mean, you can even just do skins on the front like that. You know, forget about packing it out if you don't want or if you don't want to separate it or whatever. You just tack a skin on just one eight, bend it in. It'll just bend in and staple up or tack up, right? Okay. So all the modules are in place like the frames right here right so also uh, what would you put in this space so you got uh what is it eight feet set or seven something yeah seven about seven feet ten and a bit eleven i think there and then 
10 to here. I'm just curious. I mean, O, H, O, H, O, N, 3, H, O, N, 30, N scale. What would you put in this space? 27 linear feet by 2. I'm curious. Okay, so I'll just take you now through a little walk around in closing, all right? Okay, so I want to show you my 25-year-old stud sensor Zircon. When I first showed my wife this, she had a chuckle. So you just put it on the wall like so, hold the button in. There it is, that's the stud right there. And it pretty much, it's so sensitive, it'll tell you the width of it, right? Like a one and, like one and three quarter there. So, it's this thing, like 25 years, pretty much I think I got this. And then I had to re-solder a wire in there, but man, this thing is great. Designed in the USA, right? You know what I mean? Stud sensor by Zircon. Don't even think they make them anymore. Okay, so this is why I like to use these corner braces here. See here and here, the, the heavy ones for the corners. I put one to match on each side. I drill right through just like this. Bolt her up, man. Two bolts is all you really need. One here, one there. Bang, she's good. Okay, so here's the joinery of module B to C in this corner here. Just want to show you this uh, method to my madness with using brackets. I mean, people have mentioned oh, I'd use different kind of joinery. That's fine if you want. But the reason why I use these corner braces is because I can drill through them, right? With a bolt, see? You tie the corner in. Nice. Yeah. Cheap and cheerful, right? Like you just get by with what you have, but you try to be practical with your hardware too. And same here, see? You know, probably should have had a double plate here or a double stud, but you know, maybe I might add something in there, just 45 the corner or something like that. You know, there's always a different method or solution, right? There are no problems, only solutions, as they say. That was the slogan in film. No problems, only solutions. Okay, that's that for this corner.
Okay, so see this cable and lag eye bolt 21 inches from here to the top of this hood valance. With another ring bolt here. Okay. And this is just stainless plasticized cable. You can get it in an art supply store. It's a little bit pricey, but my wife had a bunch. But it's fantastic because it's soft on the hands. You can reef on it and twist it and just unwind it. You can even put a fisherman's knot in there if you really want to. But you can unwind it and cinch it up again. In this case, it's a little bit proud on the level, but that's because when I load it up, it levels up perfectly. If I just put some weight on it, it's pretty solid. So, yeah, it's just coming together. Eh? It's getting exciting. Let me just close on this quick. You know, if the supplies, if people say, oh, you'd spend all that money just for a shelf. Listen, if this is like four to five hundred dollars materials with lighting and everything and hardware, like let's just say five hundred, like I'm around there maybe right now, maybe or so. That's one Genesis locomotive and two tank cars. Come on. Right? Think about it, right? Like how often do we build a foundation for the labor of love that we put into it? And don't you want it a nice place to come to? Do you want a nice place to come to in the morning with your coffee or your bevy? You know, and the wife will look at it and go, wow, you know. And look at the storage on the top, man, two feet deep. You know, against the wall, not heavy stuff, but boxes and stuff. Look at that. I mean, I got high ceilings here, but I think these are 11s, I think. But anyway, and then underneath, too, right, like this, like uh, I'll put lighting. Just in closing, I'll put a light under here for, you know, my roll top desk. Another light underneath the hood light and then under the bench here too as well a hood light for For my wife, you know That's how I got away with it <laughs> Okay There's the walk around for you. Just a little update. Okay. Oh Did I mention this too? I'm changing the lighting. I took down the t12 fluorescent I want to match them all with Lithonia with these ones here They're only 20 watts 20 watts, right? Compared to 75 watts for the T12s. Even though if you have T12s, they work. I know I've got a little bit higher or over my budget here, but hey, man, this is my retirement project. It's for me, right? So they're going to be two four footers here. And then uh, another four footer here. And then I'll move this four footer and put a two footer in here so it doesn't run all the way over to here. You know what I mean? So, and then I gotta do these corners next. Today, hopefully I'll get on those. Okay? So there's a little update for you. Cheers.